Hi guys and welcome to Hub's Roof channel. Thank you for tuning in. On today's video, we're going to do a water change on the Reefer 350. Right guys, before we perform the water change on the Reefer 350, I'm just going to go through what I do before to prepare, us, prepare the tank for the water change. Now, the first thing I do is I'll feed the fish. So on the auto feeder, it's just gone off, fed them about 20 minutes ago and I've let them eat that. Um, so, so that it doesn't foul the new water that's going to go in. I'll then clean the glass, get the scraper out, clean the glass, stir up a bit of the dirt in the substrate a little bit, only on the top. We don't want to release anything that's uh, underneath. We've got quite a bit of a deep one over here, so we don't want to stir anything up with that too much. Um, and that's all I do with the main display, um, because I don't perform the water change through the main display. The, um, the water change is performed through the sump, which we'll go through in a minute on the video. This is just to let you know how I prepare the tank ready for it. Um, and then we'll, we'll go through what I use to do the water change, which is salt, um, how much I do of a water change, and how I pump it out and pump it back in. So if you just bear with me, guys, I'll get everything ready for you, and we shall resume. Welcome back, guys. So in the meantime, what I've done is I've popped out, out to the shed where I keep my RO unit and, store, and water storage uh, container, and I have filled this it's, it's generally just a HDPE plastic tub um, you can get it from any DIY store or if in in the US um, any of your hardware stores they'll they'll have this or your Walmarts um, in the UK uh, you can get them from the range and places like that um, so what I've done is I filled this with 25 litres of RODI water at uh, zero TDS um, so, and I've also measured out 975 grams of salt. Now the salt I'm using today, and the salt I've been using for the last few weeks, a couple, few months um, actually, is the um, Mixed Probiotic Salt by Quantum. Now Quantum are quite a new company to the, to the British scene. Um, I, I just noticed after speaking with um, Dimitrios, um, he's actually going to have, it's going to be available in the US, um, I think it's available in Argentina and also Australia. So I picked this, I picked the tub up a few months ago um, to give it a try and see what it's like and so far so good, it's, it, the, I did a first batch, um, I did the tests for the salinity, uh, the calcium, the magnesium and the alkalinity and everything's spot on. The only thing I find with it is the instructions do state, um, I believe it's 37 grams per litre. In fact, I have to add 39 grams per litre. Um, we've gone through many tests um, with Dimitrios, um, the owner of Quantum, and um, it could just be that there's got a bit of moisture in there somehow, um, so I have to add a bit more, but what's two grams a litre? Okay, so tub of water. Now in the summer when it's a lot warmer outside um, I'll, I'll check the, the temperature of the water um, and if it's about 24 25 I won't put a heater in it. Uh, there's absolutely no point. Um, I'm happy adding the water at 25 degrees into the sump um, and letting it circulate through the tank but I've checked it today. It's a bit of a cooler day today um, and it's 18 degrees, so it's a little bit on the low side. So what I'm gonna do is I've got a spare 300 watt Eheim Jaeger heater, um, and I'm just gonna chuck this in, um, into the bottom, and it's set for, set for 27, 28 degrees, um, and that'll heat up the water nicely. So uh, before we put the salt in, it's always important. Now you can mix it by hand, but again, why would you wanna do that when you can just whack a power head in there or a mini pump, walk away, leave it for 20 minutes, half hour if that, um, watch a bit of telly, catch up on some YouTube videos, uh, read the various forums, or just sit back and admire the tank. So, with that in mind, now I have an old Tunzi power head um, for which I've misplaced the magnet. Nope, that's it. So, all I'm gonna do so I'm going to drop this into here, probably near the bottom. So I'll have it so it angles at the bottom. Um, then it'll, anything that settles on the bottom 
will all get mixed up. So we'll just chuck that in. Push that to the bottom. So now we're ready to turn the plugs on for the pump and the heater. Now the pump I just whack on a full pelt. Why not? Let's get it, let's get it mixed quick. So we just turn the plug on. You might be able to hear the faint hum of it, but that's all on and we've got a lot of water agitation in there. So we're ready to add the salt. So as previously said, got the salt in a tub and I just slowly tip it in. Give it a few seconds, otherwise you could clog the, clog the pump up, um, which I've never done. So it would be a first. Um, so just gradually measure the salt in there. There we go. Always give the it gives the tub a little bit of a, a rinse because you always get a little a few grams of salt there. Just give that a thing. Set it on top of the box. So now that's all ready. To, it's mixing away, heating up. Um, I mean, with the quantum salt, I mean, most salts mix pretty quickly, but this one is super quick. Um, it only takes 20 minutes. So I'm just going to quickly go through you with you um, why I do the water changes and how much. So why do I do them? Basically, I run a, um, a variation of the balling light method. Um, so I add all, my, all the your major, uh, your minor and your trace elements into the water. Now, I don't do water changes to replenish any used elements um, because I add them all. Um, my, bio, my filtration in my system keeps my phosphates at below 10 parts per billion on the HANA Phosphorus Ultra Low range checker, which in normal terms is 0.03. And my nitrates, they sit between five and 10. Now I'm happy to have between five and 10 nitrates. I'm not overly fussed about creeping nitrates as long as the phosphates are low. The nitrates are, it's good coral food. It saves me having to put coral food in and they feed off that. So I'm not overly fussed about that. So why do I do them when everything's taken care of? Well, when you do balling light, it is uh, recommended to do between a five and a 10% water change weekly or bi-weekly. Now I'll just do in the reef for 350, which I've worked out to be about 300 litres net. I'll do a 25 litre water change. So it's not quite 10%, um, but it's, it's more than 5%. Um, and I'll do this because sometimes you get a buildup of sodium chloride in the tank from the balling method because if the salt, all the salt and the things you're adding in. Um, so that just keeps things low. And also I find that if there is any very, very minor trace element that isn't is being uptaken a little bit more than I'm currently dosing for this will just replenish it so that's why I do the water change and that's how much I do the water change um, generally speaking it will be once a week um, we're now on Friday um, and I should have done the water change on the Monday but tank was fine um, I just pushed it so that I had time to do a really good in-depth video with you, for you guys um, and get it all sorted. You can say it's starting to clear already. There's a little bit of residue on the bottom. Um, so what we'll do is we'll pause the video here. Um, I will leave it another 10, 15 minutes. Um, I'll pop off onto and watch a bit of the Ryder Cup. The Ryder Cup's on. Um, and currently Europe are losing 3-1 to the USA. So hopefully we're doing a bit better this afternoon. So I'll have a quick watch of that for 20 minutes. Um, and then we'll come back, um, we'll test the water, just check it's the right salinity for the tank, which um, I outlined in a previous video, um, I like to run at 1.026, which is 35 parts per thousand. Um, once that's fine, and we're happy with the temperature at about 25 degrees, what we'll do is we'll go through how um, I pump water out, and then how I pump this back in. Um, so I'll see you soon, guys. Welcome back guys, sorry for the delay. Salt's now mixed and should be at temperature. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Mantis Digital Salinity Meter, um, which there is a video on the channel. I'll leave it in the link, and I'll put a link in the description down below for you to check it out. 
basically we're just going to quickly test it. So hopefully you can see it. We're at 1.026, exactly 35.0 ppt, and we're at 26 degrees Celsius. So happy days. We are now ready to pump out the old water and pump this new one in. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the skimmer off. I'm going to have some peace and quiet for once. Also, because I siphon, because I pump the water for the water change out of the sump, it's going to change the water level and could send things a little bit crazy. Um, and also, I'm going to turn the pump off for the reactor, which I'm not sure you can see from there, but I've run a bit of carbon and some roafos in there. And because we use the pump to actually pump the water out, so. 25 litre tub. I've measured exactly 25 litres in here by hand. Um, this is quite a while ago. Uh, and put a mark on there so I know how far to pump it to. Um, always have a towel on hand because you never know. You don't want to ruin your carpet. Um, you don't want your wife to have a go or your parents or it's just yourself. You don't want to get water on the carpet because it's not, it's not nice. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to disconnect the pump. From the reactor take the lid off the tub and insert the pipe into the tub and turn the pump back on okay so this is a six it's about it's about a 600 liter an hour pump um, so it will it doesn't take too long to fill this with 25 liters so what we'll do is I'll be quiet for a few minutes and we can speed this up through and then we'll carry on once this is finished. Okay, so we're about halfway through now. As you can see where the water level is where my finger is. I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera. Um, we're about halfway through, so we're nearly done. There you go, so we're pretty much at the level. So we'll just get ready to turn the pump off. And that's that, that's 25 litres taken from the sump. I prefer to do it from the sump because I don't mess about with corals and, and the fish. And I can also leave the pumps on. It's because before we started pumping the water out, what I did off camera is I took the mesh lid off and um, when I turned the return pump off. I moved the nozzle up, therefore it stops um, a lot of back siphoning down into the sump, uh, keeps the water in the, in the main display, and um, the power heads can stay on, uh, keeping the fish happy, keeping the water move, moving, and of course we don't want to expect any corals to the air really. It, I mean, sometimes it can happen um, on a larger water change. One of my, uh, I've got a green stag at the top there, and it's pretty much poking out the water nearly when I do a water change. This is why I've now moved it down into the sump area to do. So we'll just move that to one side out of the way. One thing I would like to mention is I use Ciprax as a as some biological filtration. Now, so hopefully, fingers crossed, we've got some really low flow areas in there, at which point we can get some anaerobic bacteria growing, which was um, and denitrification. I'm going to be doing a, a, um, an extended video on Ciprax. Um, how to use it effectively um, and properly and that will be in the next few weeks but you do not want to be exposing this to the air therefore as you get where my finger is here is the water level and you can see where the Ciprax is so we haven't exposed that to any air so we don't get any die off or any beneficial bacteria dying okay so that's the old water taken care of so what we'll do is we should take the heater out which has been turned off now for a couple of minutes and don't take it out immediately because you'll find it's still warm um, i've done this before and i've left it in a plastic tub and it's melted 
and burnt the top of a brand new kitchen dining room table. Don't do it. It was a lot of hassle. Trust me. Okay, so that's that taken care of. What we'll do is we'll take the pump out. Give it a little bit of a wiggle, get as much water off as possible so we don't get it on carpet. And then just pat it down and come back and let it dry properly later before we put it away. Okay, so that's that out of the way. Just bear with me. Luckily this tub is on wheels, so you can just scoot it across. And then, luckily, the pump, which we pumped out with, has got a long enough cable. And we literally just plonk it into the tub with the nice fresh salt water that we've just mixed and heated. And then what we're going to do is we're basically just going to pump it straight back in. It's as simple as that. So what I'll do is I'll go quiet again for a few minutes. We'll just speed this process up. So we're pretty much halfway there. So what, what I'll have to do eventually in a, in a couple of minutes is just tilt the tub up to get as much water in the bottom where the pump is. Obviously in the, in the best one in the world, you're never gonna get every drop out. So what I do is once it gets to the point where the pump isn't gonna pump anymore, I'll turn the pump off. I'll grab the tub, which will probably have a couple of hundred mil in it, and I'll just pour it into the top um, because it's a bit easier that way. So we'll just wait for that to happen. So that's about as much we're going to get out of the pump. So what we'll do is we'll just put the pump back into the sump. Like so. We'll come back to that in a second. So I'm just going to go out of shot. Put, just pull this into the display. Just to get the last little remnants. Okay, so that's that done. So we've effectively done a 25 litre water change in a, not that long. Okay, so what we're gonna do before we turn on, turn the skimmer back on and return back on and put the auto top up back in, we're gonna make sure everything's connected. So we just turn the little pump that feeds the reactor on back in. There we go, so that's out of the way. First of all, Turn the skimmer back on. Get that back up on and running. Turn the little pump on. And then of course, we turn the return pump back on. That should take a few seconds just to kick in once it's loaded up. So basically, that's it. That's, that's a water change, how I do it, why I do them, and how often I do them. So if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, like the video. I will put some links to some more videos in the description below. I'll also put the links into the Instagram page and the Facebook page. And if you've got any questions, send a message on the video or through any other social media site. Um, and if you've got any videos you would like me to do uh, in the future or in the next couple of weeks, just write them, write them down, send a message any way you want and we'll see what we can do. Just one more thing before we go. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we should have the upgrade within a month. I'm really excited and we've got Got some good people on board that we're going to be working with and we'll be bringing that for you and there'll be weekly updates we'll do a build on it uh, from the beginning from day one 
and I'm, we're, I'm, we're really excited here and I hope you guys are too. Okay, so thank you very much and we'll see you soon.